Hey, my name is Josh Bess. I'm an Ableton certified trainer and instructor over here at DubSpot. In part two, I'm gonna talk about how to really perform live with this with audio effects processing. Beach pop. So the first method I'm going to discuss is using Ableton Live sends and returns. And for anybody that's not too familiar with using sends and returns within Ableton Live, it's a very simple process. And I'll use this clap as an example of how this works. So I'll launch this clip with the clap sample. And when I turn up the knob for send A, you can see and hear that the signal is being sent over to return track A, where the signal is basically being doubled to two separate tracks. Now I'll head into the Live9 audio effect browser and I'll drag in the reverb audio effect to this return track. So now when I play this back, you'll hear that there's reverb applied to the signal now. But this is what I want to do. I'm going to turn up my dry wet signal all the way to 100%. So when I turn my send down, all I hear is the original clap sample. And when I turn the send A up, I hear this reverb being applied to the sound because the dry wet signal is up to 100%. I'll turn this decay up a bit. And the reason for putting the dry wet to 100% is to have full control over how much of the original sample you'd like to hear with the reverb affected signal. If the dry wet is set below 100%, the dry signal from the clap track, for example, will bleed into this return track, leading to an increase in volume in the dry signal. Where in this case, increasing the volume isn't needed, we simply want to add effects to manipulate the sound. So I can choose how much of this reverb I want by moving the send knob. If I want a small amount of reverb, I could turn the knob up a little bit. And if I want more of the reverb signal, I'll turn the knob up to a higher level. Here's an example of how this works. So I'll play this in full context of the song so you can hear how I use this with multiple tracks playing. So you can hear that I can apply this reverb to any track in the set, which allows a large amount of freedom to manipulate specific pieces of the original tune. And in this case, I have another return track, which is holding a ping pong delay. Ableton Live allows you to hold 12 return tracks, but sometimes I like to keep it simple and focus on using a reverb and a delay for my effect processing. You can see on Send B that my ping pong delay dry wet is also set to 100%, just like the reverb on Send A. So let's take a listen to how I'd use both Send A and Send B together for a live performance. So you can see the possibilities of these effects during a live show. And remember that Ableton Live allows you to hold 12 return tracks. So this could lead to a great number of effect combinations during your live sets. And that's how I would use sends and returns for my effects processing during a live show. What I'm going to discuss now is how I'd use audio effects on my master track. So if I double click on my master track title bar, you can see I have some custom audio effect racks which I've built for this live set. Let's first take a look at this master effects rack that I created. This audio effect rack controls a few basic parameters of my master output, the first two being a low pass filter and a high pass filter. You probably heard these effects before, and I'll open this audio effect rack to show that I'm using two EQ8s to filter out frequencies to create this effect. And to control the parameters within this rack, I'm using macro controls of the audio effect rack. We also teach methods on how to use macro controls in our Ableton Live course over here at DubSpot. So I'm using these macro controls to control the frequency amount. And I have this filter Q knob, which is controlling the bandwidth of the frequency curve. The reason for this knob is to create more of a sweeping effect through the frequencies. Now 
This filter Q knob works with the high pass filter as well. And if we open up the macro mapping browser, you can see that I have a minimum and a maximum amount set for this bandwidth. This is to avoid the bandwidth curve from boosting too high or cutting too low. I like to set the minimum about 0.71 and the maximum to 3. So when I turn this knob, it never goes above or below these amounts. For example, if I get rid of the minimum and maximum amount, when I sweep through the frequencies, I could boost too much of the mid-range and receive lots of unwanted frequencies in the mix. If I turn down the Q all the way, now I'm pulling away too many frequencies, losing too much of the body of the tune. So I like to keep these at a nice place in between these values to create a smooth workflow for my live sets. So I also have a redux and a chorus to add some extra effects to my master output. I also have this fade out knob which is created with an EQ3 and a ping pong delay. This effect is based off of Ableton Live's fade to gray effect. I really enjoy this effect for the end of a song or a full set where I like to fade out a tune smoothly. And next I have these three other audio effect racks, which are inspired by DJ Kiva, another Ableton instructor at Dubspot. This first audio effect rack is a beat repeat effect rack, so let's take a listen to this. So you can hear that my entire master output is being repeated as a full unit, which is a reason why I like to have this on my master output. But also note that you could throw this effect on any individual tracks as well. For example, you could throw this beat repeat effect rack on your kick or snare track to add chops and beat repeats to these individual parts of the song. This effect rack is created by mapping out macro control knobs to the repeat button on multiple beat repeats set to various grid values. Notice the chance is on 0%, so the beat repeat will only be in effect when the repeat button is enabled. I do this so I have control of each grid value being repeated. The last knob, which I've titled Super, is mapped out to the grid value as well for an effect of sweeping through various beat repeat grid values. So this rack is pretty much the same as the beat repeat rack, except for all the beat repeats in this have the pitch decay turned up to create this effect. I like using these for various pitch down effects. I could use them to end a phrase, a song, or simply add them in the middle of a tune for a pitch down effect at various grid values. And last I have the slicer effect, which is enabling and disabling various auto pan devices at various grid values. This is a great effect which I use frequently in my live sets to chop up my tunes on the fly. And for more detail on how to build these audio effect racks and understanding effect racks in general, we teach all these ideas in the Ableton Live course at Dubspot. And last, I can MIDI map all these parameters for easy access during a live show. If I hit the MIDI map mode switch, I could click on any of these send knobs. I'll click on send A and move a knob on my MIDI controller. I'll do the same with send B. So when I'm playing my tunes live, I could control these parameters quick and easy during a show. I could do the same with all the macro knobs in the audio effect rack, for example the low pass filter, the high pass filter, and the filter Q.
So with part one and part two of this tutorial, you can see how easy it is to bring your studio production to a live performance setting using Ableton Live. So I'm hoping with all these tips and techniques that you can take your original productions to a live performance setting in a new way. So you could pick up this live pack over at joshbest.net. To learn more about our courses over here in New York or online, you could check out dubspot.com. Hey, I'm Josh Best, and I'm an Ableton guy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.